This pants pattern is packed with personality. Front and back pleats, side slant pockets, back welt pockets, a button tab, hook and clasps, and a zipper fly. These are high-waisted, wide-legged trousers and the pattern is No Me 2053. I've used a medium weight cotton for the pants and I paired them with a sweater knit top with ruched sleeves. A quick and easy sewing project, I'll link the pattern for the top in the description. Let's sew a great pair of pants step by step, let's get sewing. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of your right fly facing, to one of your left fly pieces, to the wrong side of one flap, two welts, and the waistband piece. Here is the wrong side of one of my front pant pieces, where I've transferred the stitching lines from the pattern piece. I'm going to place each pair of stitching lines right sides together and pin matching the stitching lines. Then we'll sew from the top to the bottom of our stitching lines for both pleats. Repeat for both front pant pieces, then press your pleats toward their respective center fronts. Then we're going to base the top edges of the pleats in place for both front pants. Place your pocket facing piece right sides together with the slanted edge of the front pant. Pin in place and repeat for both front pants. Sew those slanted pocket edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Open the pocket out over its seam allowance and give that seam a good press. Then we're going to understitch. Sewing on the pocket right alongside the seam that we just sewed with about an eighth inch seam allowance, repeating for both front pants. Then press those pockets to the wrong side along that seam. Place your side front and pocket pieces right sides together with the pocket facings, aligning those curved edges and pin in place. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish the raw edges together. Pin the pocket to the front pan along the side and bottom edges. Baste those edges in place. Place your front pan pieces right sides together. We're going to pin together from the large dot to the notch as transferred from the pattern piece. Sew this small section with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. For the left front piece, we're going to fold back that center front to the wrong side by 3 8 of an inch. There is a line and a dot from the pattern piece that indicates this fold line. At the dot at the end of the fold line, I'm going to clip to but not through that dot. This will allow me to press that 3 8 of an inch back cleanly. Now that I have my left center front pressed back, I'm going to take a moment to finish the raw edges for both of the front crotch curves. From the top to the slash on the left side, then the remainder of that left curve, then the entire top to bottom of the curve on the right side. With the right side of the zipper facing you, we're going to place it underneath that left folded back edge. You want your bottom zipper stop to be at the small dot transferred from your pattern piece, which is the same point that we clipped into earlier. And you want that pressed edge to be close to your zipper teeth. Pin in place. Then we can baste the zipper in place close to the folded edge. Place your left fly pieces right sides together and pin the outer edges. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Trim the seam allowances of the sewn portion by about half. 
Turn this piece right side out and give it a good press. I'm going to baste this open section together at 5 8 of an inch from top to bottom. I'm also going to finish the raw edges together. Place your left fly piece on top of the wrong side of your zipper, aligning the small dots and the outer raw edges. Pin in place through all thicknesses. Then we're going to baste once again from top to bottom along those original zipper basting stitches. Now that all of those layers are basted in place, you can reduce your stitch length and give that section a final sew right along that pressed edge that we've been stitching on from top to the dot back stitching to secure. Finish the outer curved edge of your right fly facing. Place the right fly facing right sides together with the right front pant, aligning the top and center front raw edges. Pin in place from the top to the large dot transferred from your pattern piece. Sew from the top to the large dot back stitching to secure with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're going to turn this fly facing over its seam allowance. Sew the facing to the seam allowance with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Press the right fly facing to the inside along the original seam line. Now we can lay the center front of the right piece over the left so that both center front placements are on top of each other. Baste the right and left pieces together along this center front through all thicknesses. On the inside, we're going to pin the left fly out of the way. so it doesn't get caught in the next set of stitches. We're going to sew the opposite unstitched side of the zipper tape to the right fly facing. We're going to do this twice, first stitching these pieces together close to the zipper teeth, then stitching once more about through the middle of the zipper tape. I've transferred my fly stitching line to my right front piece. With the right facing underneath and the left fly still pinned out of the way, we're going to sew the front of the pant to the right facing underneath along this stitching line. As you approach the center at the zipper teeth, use your hand wheel to stitch this section so you don't break a needle. Now you can unpin that left fly and using a needle and thread, I'm going to hand tack the right and left fly pieces together along the bottom most curve. And then from the right side of the garment, you can choose to sew a bar tack where our fly top stitching meets the center front seam. I'm choosing not to sew a bar tack here to avoid breaking my needle. Then you can remove those center front basting stitches. Place your flat pieces right sides together and pin the side and bottom edges. Sew these edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Trim your seam allowances, turn it right side out and give it a good press. Sew your buttonhole at the marking as transferred from your pattern piece. I'm choosing not to sew a buttonhole, I'm just going to sew a button through all layers at the end of the project. Place your flap right sides together with the right front piece, aligning the notches and the top raw edges and pinning in place. Baste in place. Here are the wrong sides of both of my back pant pieces and I'm going to pin both of the darts for both pieces. Then we'll sew each of the darts from top to bottom along the stitching lines, leaving thread tails at each end so you can tie them in knots. Press each of the darts toward the respective center backs. 
Now along each of the welt openings that you've transferred to your pattern piece, we're going to stitch along those transferred rectangles. We're going to slash through the center of both rectangles, also snipping diagonally to each of the small dots at each corner. Careful not to clip through your stitching line. Fold your welt pieces in half wrong sides together. Baste the long raw edges together. Place each of your welts onto the right side of the back pieces so that the 5 8 of an inch seam line is right on top of the lower stitching line of the rectangle that we stitched earlier. Also match your dots and pin in place. Repeat for both back pants. Baste in place. For my back pockets, I've chosen to blend main and lining fabrics. This way the main fabrics will remain visible through and around the welt opening and the lining helps to reduce bulk in the pocket. I'll place my back pocket right sides together with the back pant, placing the seam line of the raw lower edge at the seam line that we just sewed into the welt piece. Aligning those dots and pinning in place. Stitch in place from outer dot to outer dot back stitching at both dots. Fold back the top portion of the pant so that you can access the top stitching line of the welt opening. Fold your pocket in half along the fold line. Here is the transferred marking of my welt opening onto the top of my pocket. I'm going to align the top transferred line with the top stay stitching of that welt opening and pin in place. Note that the pocket and the top of that welt opening are right sides together. Repeat pinning for both pockets. Sew from small dot to small dot for both top edges of the welts. Now on the inside when we fold back the side of the pocket and the welt, see the tiny triangle that remains from where we slashed open the pocket earlier. We're going to sew the long edge of the tiny triangle to the welt and pocket underneath. Doing this for both sides of the pocket for both pockets. Now I'll sew the side edges of the pocket closed and I'll finish the side edges from top to bottom on both sides. Here are the finished welt pockets. I'm going to pin the top of the pant to the top of the pocket and baste in place. Here is my front pant piece and I've gone ahead and finished the side edges as well as the inner leg edges for both front legs. I've done the same for both back leg pieces, finishing the inner legs, the outer legs, and the crotch curve again for both pant pieces. Now I'll place my front and back pieces right sides together and pin together the inner leg seam on both sides. Sew the inner legs from the bottom of the crotch curve all the way to the bottom of the pant with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, then I'm going to press the seams open. Place the back crotch curve right sides together, pin from the top across that center crotch seam all the way across to the bottom of that tiny section that we sewed in the front at the beginning. Sew from that notch toward the bottom of your front crotch curve across that center seam and all the way to the top of the back pant with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then we can sew our front and back pieces together along the side seams from top to bottom on both sides. 
Sew both of the side seams from the top to the bottom of each leg with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. For the carrier's piece, we're going to fold both of the long edges to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch and give that a good press. Then with those folded edges still pressed under, fold this piece in half wrong sides together and give that a good press. I'm going to pin the open edge, then I'm going to edge stitch both of the long edges. Cut your carriers into four equal pieces, three and three quarter inches long. Then press one short end of the carriers to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch for each piece. Place the raw unpressed edge of each carrier at the large dots along the top of the pant, centering them in place, aligning the raw edges. Baste each carrier in place. Fold and press the left short edge of the waistband to the wrong side by 3 eighths of an inch as indicated on the pattern piece. Also fold the long unnotched edge to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch and press. Trim this 5 eighths of an inch folded edge to 3 eighths of an inch. Starting from this left folded back section, I'll place this folded edge on the left side of the pant at the center front and pin in place. Then continue matching the raw edges and the dots to pin all the way around the waist. Note that the right side of the waistband will extend beyond the right center front. Sew the waistband in place with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. Trim the seam allowance of the sewn portion. Then press that seam allowance up toward the waistband. Also pressing the seam allowance of the right extension to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch. Fold your waistband in half right sides together along the fold line. Now that it's right sides together, we're going to pin the short edge of the right waistband extension. Sew the short edge, making sure the bottom folded edges are still tucked under with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Trim that seam allowance. Turn this section right side out. And then continue turning that waistband to the wrong side, wrong sides together all the way around, pressing along that top fold line. Now with the waistband folded in place, it should be covering the main seam line on the inside. You can use a needle and thread to slip stitch your way all the way around the waistband on the inside, or you can stitch in the ditch from the outside seam, catching that folded edge of the inner waistband as you go. You're going to do this from the bottom short edge of the right side of the waistband extension all the way around. When you get to the left side, you'll pivot your stitching vertically to sew along the folded edge of the left waistband all the way to the top. Flip each of your carriers upward so that the folded edge that we pressed earlier meets with the folded edge of the waistband. Pin each carrier in place. And then edge stitch along the upper edges for each carrier. Now you can sew on your button underneath your buttonhole through the pants. Because I'm making this a faux closure, I'm going to sew the button to the flap and through the pants. Sew 
sew a buttonhole into your left fly at the marking indicated from the pattern piece. Then we'll sew a button onto the right side of the front waistband across from the buttonhole, sewing through the inner portion of the waistband only and not through the outer portion. Now we can sew on the hook and bar closures. Sew the straight edge of the hook on the inside of the right side of the waistband along its straight edge, again making sure that your needle doesn't pass through the front of the waistband. Then sew the bar in place on the left side of the waistband across from the hook. The hem allowance for the bottom of the pant legs is one and three quarters of an inch. I press the bottommost edge to the wrong side by half of an inch, then press the remainder of the hem to the wrong side as well for a total of one and three quarters of an inch. Now I'm going to edge stitch close to the upper inner fold all the way around repeating for both pant legs. And now the pants are complete. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future sewing tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.